Okay, this first round matchup for this year's Pain for Glory tournament for the BPW North American Championship is kicking off with this man, Jason Crawford, an independent wrestler of the past 10 years, finally making his way to the big leagues. Did take a little bit of time off to heal some injuries, but word is that he's back at 100% and is ready to take the VPW North American Championship in what is his VPW debut, and I'm sure I won't be saying that for the last time tonight. <clears throat> Later on tonight, we will crown a new VPW North American Champion. We also have a VPW World Heavyweight Championship match before that with Gregory Snape defending his championship against Jordan Bryant. What a night we have here for you this evening. Jason Crawford's known for being a brawler, but his finisher, the crunch time, a brutal sit-out tombstone pile driver, and we all know how brutal that move can be. His opponent here tonight is also making his VPW debut. His name is Lucian L. Jones, and he wants you to know who he is. He's right here in VPW. Lucian L. Jones, a world-class wrestler from the Two Stars promotion that recently went out of business. He was their final World Heavyweight Champion and he's looking to transfer that success from there to here. And it's gonna be a difficult proposition because Jason Crawford isn't gonna be an easy opponent here tonight. None of the competitors here tonight are gonna be easy victories. grand prize of this championship tournament, the VPW North American Championship. First champion crowned here tonight. Thought they were going to go for a collar elbow tie up, but no. Just drops him out of that suplex. Picks him up. Just going to drag him to the ropes. Going to throw him out. Wait a minute, what's he going to do here? I thought he was going to go for a DDT, but he's just kicking and punching and punching and kicking. Showing that mean streak that he's known for. Some call him the Pale Warrior, but not to his face. He's just stomping that hand. Might not be the wisest move, considering... Uh, Lucian L. Jones uses the Ghetto Blaster Kick. A vicious version of the Shining Wizard float over DDT. He's back in play. He's gonna pick him up. He's gonna throw him into the ropes, maybe? No, he's gonna drag him to the corner. Snapmare takeover. Didn't work well. Crawford back to his feet. Under and a gut buster. He does like himself a good gut buster. Is that man? He's climbing up to the top rope. What's he gonna do here? Elbow drop completely misses. He gets nothing but canvas. He overestimated his leaping ability and caught nothing but mass. Lucian back in play. And a overhead belly, a belly suplex. Gonna bring him in. I think he might be going for a cover. He is. Cover. One. No. This referee's gonna be doing overtime tonight. Oh, man. Wait. Oh! Suplex. He's anticipating a block from Jason. That didn't work out well. And. Nope. There's the block, though. I thought. No. No. Neither man can nail a DDT on the other. He's got to target that arm. J 
chasing. Bringing him back into the, into the ropes. Shoots him off. And a shoulder tackle. Just plows right through him. Cover. No, not even. The Sultan of Swagger has gotten the shoulder up before even a one count. And Jason Crawford taking things to the Duke of Jonestown. Knees to the head. Unprotected. Gotta be rough. Might be looking at a concussion here. That might actually be what Jason is aiming for here tonight. Kick to the sternum. Snapmare takeover. He's going to try and put him in a rest hold. Jason coming up to his feet. Punch to the ribs. And... A short arm lariat. Ripcord style. Doesn't keep... Lucian down. He's looking to his people. And they're right behind him. And an overhead belly to belly suplex once again takes down Jason Crawford. And there is a heavy kick. Jones might be looking to take him down here. And there is the ghetto blaster. Crawford's busted open. One. Two, and no, no, just a two count, I don't think he got all of it. Jason Crawford trying to get back into play. Final scary takeover. Throw him over the top rope. Wait a minute, he's joining him on the outside. And a DDT right into the apron. That is the hardest part of the ring. He's going to be dropping four, five elbows, six elbows, seven elbows, eight elbows, nine elbows. Where's the count when you need him? And there's the tenth. Referee counting him out. They're battling by the judges table. If this goes to a uh, double count out, it'll be up to them to see what we do. And no back, uh, both men back in the ring. Snap bear takeover. And Crawford with an arm wrench, trying to pull it out of its socket. This is not good for the Sultan of Swagger. Face is coming out, body part. And the, oh, missed with the headbutt. Float over, back in, no, Northern Light suplex. One, two, no. I would have thought that Jay, uh, Jason would have seen um, Lucian's foot under the rope. And there, short arm lariat one more time. What's he got to follow up with? He just rakes the back. I don't know what he's playing at. He could have put him away there. And there's the finest carry into the, the Samoan drop. One. Two, no, kick out of two. Jason may have thrown his only opportunity out the window here. Would be enough cut. He's still in control low. No. Luciano Jones counters with a neck breaker. Winds up and a huge European uppercut. Takes Jason off his feet. Lucian now attacking the vertical base. Misses with that kick. And now the war counters. Swap drop DDT. And now Lu 
Ocean just opening that gusher on Jason's head. Could be trying to finish things off. No back suplex into the ropes. You see the ropes bending there. Those are steel cables for crying out loud. And here we go. Second chance at the ghetto blast and nails it. One, two, and oh my god. With the proverbial crimson mask, Jason kicks out again, showing the resilience of his namesake, Jason Voorhees. Looking just about as pale as him too, but don't tell him I said that. And Lucian trying to put this man down. His blood seeps from his head. And there's the Enzigiri. He's gonna try and pin him off of that. One, two, no! And Lucian's got to be thinking to himself, what do I have to do to put this man away? But he's sizing him up for one more shot at the Ghetto Blaster, but blocked, knee to the skull. Takes down Jason, cuts off his comeback, and into the corner. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I might have just been 10. I might have missed one. Those were rapid fire. Lucian trying to put this man away. And a clothesline. Cover. One, two, kick out. This is only a first round matchup here. Lucian can't put this man away. There's the kneeling jawbreaker. Comes into the fisherman carry. He's gonna put him in the corner and he's gonna go for the rapid fire again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I still missed one. How? First and in the eye there, Enziguri misses. He scouted that back fist. Oh God, takes him up top. And drops him. That's gotta be it. Why is Jason not covering? He has thrown this match away at least four times now. It's got to be something wrong. He's not even attempted to hit his patented finishing maneuver, the crunch time pile driver. Instead, he's dragging this out, stretching out the arm. The armor is not supposed to bend that way behind his back. Stomping on the other free arm. European upcut into the corner. The blood is in his eyes. He can't he can't have that much uh, depth perception. Hold on a second. Lucian's busted open and there's the crunch time. This could be it if he could just cover him. One, two, and oh! Lucian L. Jones kicks out at two there. The L does stand for legendary. And that no misses with the Enziguri. These men going to war here shows you just how valuable the VPW North American Championship is to both of these guys. And winding up in a huge European uppercut. One, two, and no! Oh! Both men bleeding from their heads. 
Lucian looking for another Ghetto Blaster. And he nails it. This could be it. This should be it. One, two, and three. Lucian L. Jones picking up the victory hard for by both men. My God. There's that ripcord lariat. I do suggest that, uh, that Jason Crawford go back to the gym and learn not to throw these matches away. As an unbiased commentator here, he could have won this much earlier, but he took his time to try and beat Lucian down some more. He took his time posing to the crowd and now Lucian L. Jones gets the victory and moves on to the second round where he will face either James Phelps or AK-47 as the tournament continues. Here we go, Continu uh, continuing even with the first round matchups. Here comes Caleb Hart, purports himself to be from the Hart Family Dungeon in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. But, he hails from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, that's about as real as a $2 bill. Caleb was in the original Pain for Glory Championship Tournament and went out in the first round to the man who actually went on to win the VPW Heavyweight Championship, Gregory Snape. So maybe he can redeem himself here tonight and the lights dim. And here comes John Robertson, one of two Australian competitors in this tournament. Glad he's back to season two of BPW. Because he could do a lot of damage here. One of the things that Caleb will have to look out for here tonight is the S2B. Sure you can to the ball. John already knows how to do a Hadouken. And that Shoryuken to the Bulls ends up being a deadly combination. Definitely if applied right. For some reason John checking his sleeves. There we go. We'll start this off with a suplex. A low suplex. Misses with that move. Not a good maneuver. It looks like we might be getting the brawl that we expected. And he's dragging his head across the ropes. A little bit of rope burn there. That's some vintage <laughs> maneuvering by Caleb Hart. Which is impressive. I haven't seen that move in goddamn nearly 15, 20 years. A high drop kick by John Robertson. Going after the leg. If he goes after that leg, Caleb will not be able to apply the Hart family sharpshooter. Again, he says he's from the Hart family. Nobody's directly acknowledged this dude, so who knows. And up and... Nope. Caleb slips out the back. Probably just like he did when Stu Hart said... Hey, let me put a hold on you. That sounded way more creepy than I intended it to be. <laughs> and a high clothesline by John Robertson. You'll find John Robertson performing all across the world. Doing the darkroom as well as stand-up specials. But here tonight, he's here in New Orleans for the Pain for Glory tournament. 
There's nothing funny about this. Definitely nothing funny about what's about to happen. Huge superplex takes John. John still has the wherewithal to fight back. Tornado DDT. He's got to go to the top rope. We saw how well this worked out for Jason Cro uh, Yeah, Jason Crawford. Completely missed. And John... No, he thought differently, but caught with a modified version of the crucifix pin. An impact maneuver by Caleb Hart. He's going to go for a springboard. Cross body. He's got body and body there. One, no. Way too early for that. John with a kip up runner. Impressive athleticism by the Australian comedian and the lord and master of dark rooms across the world. Wait a minute. Side Russian leg sweep with the arm ringer. That's a little bit more impact to that move. And Caleb. Going for a huge backdrop. And I think he got some of that. Caleb emulating a little bit of Brett here. No, he's telling John to get up. And an axe handle smash. From the second rope. Oh, low blow. Usually it's John dishing out those uh, those low blows. John going low himself, but a little bit lower, kicking them in the kneecap. Back elbows. Saves himself. What's John going to go for here? Oh! Whatever it was, shut down by that crossbody. Caleb setting him up. What he calls the new heart attack. This could be it here for John. One, two, and no! John gets the shoulder up at two. I don't think everybody here should get a new finish. And the backdrop. Elbow across the jaw. Pretty sure that elbow pad didn't have enough padding to stop it from hurting. And what if I snake eyes in the corner? John trying to fight back. Not quite working. A Manhattan drop. And the across the back. He might be trying to size him up for the uh, for the sharpshooter here. One, two, no, two count, kick out. One thing competitors need to be aware of is that they will be wrestling multiple times tonight. So they need to try and finish things off quickly as possible. And there it is, Shoryuken to the balls. Could be it. One, two, no! Oh my god. Hit him again. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be unbiased, but oh! Completely missed that. Not a good maneuver. For a driver drops him, spikes him. I think he bounced just a little bit. Oh, we got tangled there. Sean Robertson looking surprisingly good after just eating a pile driver. Being jawbreaker. 
punches him. He's gonna hook the arm. Soup, no. Oh, he's got a suplex blocked by Caleb Hart. And there we go with that back suplex. Different version, a little bit of a spin this time. And the referee is checking on John Robertson. This does not bode well for him right now. And he's gonna go for it. He's locking it in. The Hart family sharpshooter. Can John get to the ropes? I'm not sure if he did get to the ropes there. He looked a bit far. And Caleb's got his feet on the ropes. Come on, ref. Check him. No. John Robinson still gets the shoulder up at two. John is just eating so much punishment right now. His leg, one, no. He's getting a little bit desperate here. And a clothesline. Completely ducks. Caleb's offense there. He's going to hit it. No! He broke the, the, the Hadouken and punches him again in the balls. John is not in a good way right now. There we go. Shinbreaker. face. The referee can do nothing about it here in VPW. No holds barred wrestling. There's a sling blade. Learned that from Tanahashi. I don't think he should be posing to the crowd right now. Natural showman. This might not be the best option for him right now. Throws him over the ropes. Sends him to the outside. And the judges, they go scattering. And Caleb Hart is busted open. Got to the count of 10 to get back in the ring. What's John doing? Oh, he's bringing the fight real close to the judges. Got two new judges this year. I haven't named them. Into the ring steps. He's an eight. Nine. And John wins this by count out. The son of a bitch did it. My God. He had a king flag. Now he has to rest up for round two. This is not good. This is definitely not good. And John was so damaged in this match that the referee had to check on him, but now he is going regardless to the next round, where he will fight either Yuri Tomasian or Azrael. If he continues this, he might just win the whole damn thing. 
employing the Homer Simpson method. Get hit a lot, and then cheat your way to victory. Push him over. Okay, the third of our first round matchups features this man, this monster, James Phelps from Topeka, Kansas. I know what you're thinking. He's part of the Phelps family. No, he's not. There are multiple Phelps families in Kansas, and this man came from one of the sickest and depraved of them all. Laser focus. Jumping out the ring. Almost in total darkness. This depraved son of a bitch. Let loose on the VPW roster. There's going to be a David versus Goliath battle here tonight. As his opponent is AK-47. A man who claims to have zero fear. Learned from years of extreme sports in Australia. We already have one Australian through and I still can't believe that John Robertson Got that victory over Caleb Hartford via countout. I would say it was a case of working harder, uh, smarter, not harder, but John did take a lot of punishment in that first round matchup. So the key thing for AK-47 here is to use his speed to outwit a monster from Topeka. You can see him in the background just stalking AK-47. Here we go. This is a hell of a mismatch, and they're tying up, and somehow AK-47 has the monster in the headlock, shoots him off into the ropes, and try- What the hell? It just picked him up and hip-tossed him, blocked it, and- What the- How strong is this little dude? Is he like Ant-Man or something? Very small, but very strong. My god. He's lifting something like three times his weight. Guy's been eating his Wheaties. That being said, Phelps with a big back body drop just flings him. I've heard rumblings that the actual Phelps family would like to use this man as their enforcer, but he has no interest in the, any of that. Family name be damned. Slings him off into the ropes. Catches him. No. Tripped up. Couldn't get him up for that belly of belly suplex. Look at this guy. He's at least three times as wide as AK-47 is. AK-47 eats a boot to the face. Picked up like nothing. Thrown overhead, gut wrench suplex style. Cover. One, no. I was thinking that this was going to be a hell of a mismatch, but apparently AK-47 is 
able to hold his own against this brute. Ducks under and hits him with that version of a. Um, I'm not sure what that's a version of. A neck breaker into the uh, into a face crusher to the knee. He drops him with a flat out reverse DDT. He's trying to get him back on his feet. And catches him with a flying DDT. This match is going exactly AK-47's way. But I don't think any of us would have thought that it would go this well for him. Roll up. God, what a counter. No. Just as the ref's hand was come down for two. Nick Breaker. We'll go for a scissors kick corkscrew. Could be trying to finish him off here. Don't know if this is a good idea. Tiger bomb. One, two, three. My God. That smaller guy had so much strength in him. My god. Now I'm pretty sure the David and Goliath roles were reversed here. James Phelps was David, and AK 47 was Goliath. What an upset! God. Just as I thought that John Robertson was out and he got a count out victory, I thought that this would have been a cakewalk for James Phelps. But no. He looks so happy. As much as he can look happy underneath that mask. AK-47 into the second. We've just heard that there will be an extra member of our world championship match tonight. We don't know who it is, but we're going to find out later on tonight as Gregory Snape defends against Jordan Bryant and this mystery opponent. Now coming to the ring, Yuri Tomasian for this final first round matchup. The Russian Mauler with a dangerous kick to the chest known as Mutually Assured Destruction. He's uh, got a heavy influence in kickboxing and judo. He's ready to go here against his opponent interesting individual in his own right. They do call him the right hand of the father as he is the right hand of the high priest and here he is right now. His name is Azrael. Stands six foot six. And has only one goal destruction of whatever's in front of him. This is one third of the Empire of Pain, which is a weird name for a religious group. Not everybody can be the ministry. Notice that they are, uh, well, <coughs> Notice the absence, even, of his cohorts, Archangel and the High Priest. Powers that be have decreed that at no point tonight is there to be any interference. Anybody who will interfere 
would be fired. There have been issues with interference before in these tournaments, and the powers that be have decreed no more. Hopefully, people will pay attention to that. We're going to find out as this final first round match continues. Or even starts. There we go. Colorado bow tie up straight to the back. As Rael. Huge takedown there. Tomasian. Going behind. And takes him down himself. Side headlock takedown. And a punch to the skull. You'll notice a massive scar on the side of Azrael. That's from when he was a child and indoctrinated into what would become the Empire of Pain. That is not a birthmark, that is not scarification. It's actually a scar in the perfect face of a demon. If you can believe that. Looks like he was branded. And no, he catches Yuri. One of his kicks picks him up, drops him on the knee. This could be over very quickly, much like our last match. And a huge clothesline. Yuri just ran right into that. And Israel taking him into the ropes. Slingshots him off. Knee. Bad camera work. And side rush and leg sweep. It's keeping the pressure on Yuri here. Brings him back into the ropes. And flings him back. Yuri yet to get out of the starting block here, but maybe this will be the start of his comeback. European upcut takes the Azrael down. Knees straight to the skull. Single leg crab. Azrael trying to get to the rope. But manages to fight out of it anyway. Back elbow to the head. And a Pele kick. Not quite an overhead one. Nicely done. Uh, oh, up and over. Follows it up with, oh my god, a suplex into a, a long blower. Oh, now Yuri's just playing around with him. Who knew that Russians had a sense of humor? And a German suplex folds him up like an accordion. And into the sleeper hold. Flailing out there. Azrael was able to touch the rope. Ends up breaking the hold. And here it is. Mutually assured destruction. He's a bit too close to the ropes. Two. No. Kick out. Thought it was a bit too early for that. And I was right. Is Yuri trying to get him up? Azrael isn't moving. Oh, he was playing possum. Shoulder block, takedown. Somehow he withstood that really stiff kick to the chest. Wait a minute, takes him down. Punches to the head. Yuri successfully defending himself there. Goes to the outside. Pulling himself back up. A punch sending him to the actual ring floor there. A kick to the back. We've already seen one count out tonight. Now we're going to see another one, not just yet, anyway. Boom! Elbow to the point of the head. To the point of the jaw there. And a dragon sleeper. Look at the way his back is arching. That's like forced yoga. 
recovery somehow. Fight now, bit. Brings him back in. Overhead belly a belly suplex. Cover. One. Two. Kick out there. Two. These two men go into war. Says we're out going for. Oh shit. Running power slam. Hooks the leg. But I think Yuri was just too close to the ropes there. Referee calls it as he sees it. He hooked the leg, but the other leg was touching the rope, or at least breaking the plane of the rope, which is in fact a rope break. As enforced by Unforgiven 2001, Angle versus Austin. Punches to the head. Seeing so many people bleed tonight. Up and over with a suplex. I think the next big move will finish this off. Going full tilt since the start of this match. Picks him up. Go go for that. No. Put, puts him down with a, a power slam. Now that military press back into that dragon sleeper. Very not as lucky. Be able to get to the rope, but he fights out of it anyway. Up and up, no, reverse into the slop drop DDT. Then Casrael has this one in, f just in reach of victory. Power slam. One, two, three. Azrael knocks off Yuri Tomasian. Moves on to the second round where he will face John Robertson. What will be a very interesting match. John Robertson has been checked over by trainers and he insists that he's still able to go. So our next match will be Lucianel Jones versus AK 47. As for the result of this match, you have to believe the Empire of Pain are pleased that their man has gone through, Azrael being the only representative of their trio to make the championship tournament. Our final four, Lucianel Jones, AK-47, John Robertson, and Azrael. Who is going to walk home? BPW North American Champion. You have to believe Azrael thinks he will. You have to believe AK-47 thinks he will. You have to believe El Lucian L. Jones thinks he will. And John Robertson, who knows what that man's thinking. But he's going to give it a damn good shot anyway. The first, second round matchup. One of these men will go through to the third and final round. Lucian L. Jones, who beat Jason Crawford earlier on tonight. Making his way back to the ring. He looks in good spirits. You have to believe that he, he's thanking his lucky stars right now that Jason Crawford had a weird inability to capitalize on his own offense. Otherwise, the result of that match would have been very, very different. Lucian's in very, very good spirits. <clears throat> winner of this will go on to face the winner of Azrael versus John Robertson in the final. And we'll walk home with the VPW North American Championship. Here comes AK 47. 
seven. Knocks off James Phelps in what seemed to be a mismatch, but not, <clears throat> but ended up being a mismatch that none of us could have predicted. The smaller man, the David versus Goliath, ended up being Goliath. Beat down James Phelps, took him down with one tiger bomb. To move into the showdown with Lucian L. Jones. Both of these men of similar stature. Maybe Lucian L. Jones has a height advantage. Australian acrobat. Both men have to be at least somewhat tired after their first round matchups. Lucian L. Jones had to go to war. And that, isn't that one of Azrael's moves? Apparently it doesn't matter. start chain wrestling. Who knew that they would start chain wrestling? Into the ropes. Referee gonna try and get a clean break here. And they do! Sportsmanship, I like it. Gets tangoed. DDT spikes his head into the canvas. Lion Salt and told reliably that he can hit that from anywhere in the ring. Cover any distance. Which is certainly incredible. Lucian L. Jones up and over. And takes him down with a clothesline. Damn near knocks his head off. There's a diamond cutter. Nope. Chanel Jones fighting back. Float over neck breaker. And a clothesline. Takes him down. <clears throat> Lucian L. Jones back in control here. And misses with that Enziguri. AK-47 definitely taking note of the first round matchup. Definitely helped that uh, Jason versus Lucian was the first match on the card. got to imagine that all of the participants in this tournament are watching backstage trying to pick up extra weight tiger bomb this could be it one two kick out my god that's the move that put down James Phelps in one hit but all of the competitors are watching backstage trying to get the last minute intel on their opponents AK-47 seems backing. No! Spoke too soon. Curse of the commentator. Lucian taking a step back by thinking that might not be the wisest course of action. Enziguri just clips him in the back of the head. Elbow drop to the small of the back. So 
not going to immediately follow up with a ghetto blaster kick. Uh-oh. Close line, close line. Duck. And huge drop kick. AK-47, house on fire. Going to run off the ropes. Scissors kick. Gotta go back for that tiger bomb. I think he is. He looks ready. And maybe he isn't. Nope, he is. Tiger bomb. One, two. No. So close once again. Let's not forget it took four Ghetto Blasters to put down Jason Crawford. Clearly, AK-47 is in the ring with a much bigger, better class of professional wrestler. And there's that Enziguri, the former Two Stars Heavyweight Champion. Gonna, no, DDT spikes him into the canvas. Got to take a quick breather. Remember, they have a 10 count to work with here. We've already seen one first round matchup end by count out. Could the first, second round matchup end the same way? Neck breaker on the outside, and that. That padding on the outside isn't really padded enough. And AK-47 might be bleeding underneath that mask. We have to wait to see if the blood starts seeping through the material. AK-47 elbows, elbows. And a sit-out clothesline. And no ducks. Ducks to kick. Enziguri misses. And heavy rapid fire kicks. Neither man gets it. No, AK-47 gets back up. Might be going for that Tiger Bomb one more time. If he hits this, it's history. History, history, history for Lucian L. Jones. And there's the three count. AK-47 makes it to the finals where he will face either John Robertson or he will face Azrael. I can't believe uh, Lucian L. Jones didn't capitalize the first time he hit that Enziguri. But if wishes that were fishes, the world would be an ocean. Final second round matchup here. Featuring Azrael making his way to the ring, he beat Yuri Tomasian in a really hard fought contest. Where, you're, basically the power slam just finished off Yuri after the second attempt. After this match, we'll find out who the VPW World Heavyweight Champion is gonna be. Gregory Snape defending his championship against Jordan Bryant and a mystery opponent. Nobody knows who the mystery opponent is. It's been hidden lock and key backstage I'm sure it's going to surprise us all but this match is to determine the final participant in the main event which is for the VPW North American Championship Azrael's opponent here John Robertson will be under heavy stress to win this, considering John Robertson took a heavy beating from Caleb Hart 
earlier tonight. So it's imperative for John Robertson to finish this one off quickly if he wants any shot of making the finals. Israel looks ready to go. The trainers have looked over John Robertson. They've deemed him fit to compete. Not that John Robertson would stop them anyway. Man is a workhorse. And just by looking at John, it doesn't look like he's letting on how damaged he is. I mean, Caleb Hart came within an inch of winning that match. But unfortunately for him, he ended up getting counted out in what was a wise move for John. Very wise move for the Australian comedian. The Duke of Puke. The Ayatollah of Anarchy. And we are ready to go. Collar elbow tie up into the arm ringer. Go twist that arm a little bit. John Robinson reverse into a top wrist lock. He's bringing, bringing <coughs> Azrael to his knees, but no, into a reverse hammer lock. John Robinson takes him down, modified Fujiwara arm bar. Not in a position to actually get submission there. John Robertson coming up the best of that exchange. Takes him down. Believe it or not, both men have very good uh, amateur wrestling chops. Need to skull there. Takes down Azrael. He's gone by the hair. Brings him into the ropes. John Robertson shoots him off. A huge flying forearm. Okay, go for the leg. Takes him down. Dragon screw leg whip. Into the ropes. And another one, but Azrael had it scouted this time. Sending John outside. This might not be where Azrael wants to finish this. Especially if he's on the wrong end of a count out. John Robertson fighting back. John Robertson trained in Australia and also trained by the Progress Pro Joe in London. It's unclear where Azrael was trained, but he's a very good professional wrestler, believe me. And a huge drop kick doesn't take down Azrael though. He just shrugs it off. Azrael, this could be dangerous. The referee's already up to a seven. John Robertson could win this by count out. He might not want to. No, John Robertson doesn't want to back in at a count of nine. So close, and he's targeting the arm now. That might be useful in trying to stop Azrael from hitting his finishing running power slam. Blocks the suplex. And John Robson with a block of his own. Slips out the back, half and half, suplex. Sends him ass over tea kettle. and trying to not show that he's injured here. What's he going to do here? No, he's thought better of it. Kicks Azrael in the small of the back. Scoops him up, but Azrael counters with a back. And then Jawbreaker. Tornado DDT. Takes down Ezra. Trying to rally the crowd behind him. 
Where is he going now? He might be trying to bait Azrael into a count out. I'm not entirely sure. And a spine buster. Things are not looking good for John right now. Dragon Sleeper. I saw Lucian L. Jones bust that out against AK-47 in the last match. Here we go, running power slam. This could be it for John Robertson. Hooks the leg. One, two, no! John Robertson finds a will, finds some kind of miracle to cling on to and kick out of that at two. Catches the leg, cracking screw again. Uh oh, Azrael getting back up to his feet. This might not be good. Another back soup. Oh, drops him on his face. And a lifting deadlift. Gut wrench suplex. John Robertson still finding a way to fight out. He's going to hot shot him into the ropes. I think John Robertson was going to go for a Hadouken there. Two, no, one count. John Robertson doing all he can right now. As Azrael, though he gets out of that head scissors. Gets taken down with an arm drag. And Azrael trying to take the leg right out of John Robertson. Snapmare takeover. Just trying to drain the stamina away from him. Reverse chin lock there. John Robertson fighting out. John Robertson doing absolutely everything in his power. Back elbow. Trying to get to the main event for that VPW. And there it is. Surely you can the balls. You rake the eyes. But John Robertson can't capitalize right now. He absolutely is spent. And Azrael climbing up. This is not good for John. If he can't capitalize, he can't win. And maybe, just maybe, a count out victory is all he can muster. The referee calls for a rope break. John Robertson underneath the ropes there. John fighting out into a German suplex. John's trying to fight back. Ducks the clothesline, flying forearm, and another one. Ducks the clothesline again. Spine buster of his own. Israel crawls to the corner. And a cannonball splash. Might be trying to sling blade. This could be it. No, Azrael just flips him. Up and over. Wait a minute. I think he was going to go for that fisherman buster. That could be it. Belly a belly suplex. Two. Kick out a two. John Robertson is not done yet. Baz Royale. Looks like he's going to try and finish him off. Scoops him up. Running power slam. This could be the end for John. One. Two. And three. No! Oh, that was so close. That was absolutely within a dog hair of being over for John Robertson, but he just scooched his shoulder up at 2.9. Azrael has got to be admiring, got to be respectful of John's resiliency right now. John does not look good. Taken down again. And 
Headbutt, I think Azrael's bleeding. Suplex by John Robertson, floats over, but the foot was underneath the ropes. Could not capitalize on that suplex. Sling blade. He's gonna try and cover him off of that. One, two, John Robertson. Miracle of the century. Fights back. After taking an ass kicking from Caleb Hart and an ass kicking from Azrael to make it to the finals of this North American Championship Tournament. I have to applaud <laughs> the resilience of John Robertson right here. What a victory. Pulled that sling blade out of nowhere. Gets a pinfall victory over Azrael. And he's going on to face AK-47, fellow Australian AK-47 in the tournament finals. Good on you, John. Good on you. In the middle of this Pain for Glory tournament for the VPW North American Championship, we now turn our attention to the biggest prize in the company, VPW World Heavyweight Championship. Here comes the challenger, Jordan Bryant. And a monkey wrench was thrown into the works by the powers that be. They've announced that a new superstar will be entering this championship match. Instant Wolf title match for that guy. But this does mean that all of the training that Gregory Snape and Jordan Bryant have had put in has been thrown out the window by the introduction of this new superstar. Nobody knows who it is, but Jordan Bryant is ready to go. This is a huge opportunity for him. He was one of the few that earned a championship match before VPW took a hiatus. And we're looking in the crowd. I believe this will be the world champion, Gregory Snape, making his way to the ring. He looks focused among the crowd. Can he retain? Nobody has kicked out of his signature finisher, the headshot. It's always been one hit, one kill, done. With this match being elimination rules, this might not be the best time, the best match for Gregory Snake. We're about to find out who the mystery opponent is. Wait a minute. Cassius! Chris Holy shit, it's Chris Hero! It's Chris Hero! Chris Hero is here in VPW! What the hell? Not only is Chris Hero here in VPW, but he has a world championship opportunity here. The king of the cravat, one of the kings of wrestling, is here in VPW. What a major coup. What the hell? Looking to knock somebody out with that rolling elbow. Oh my god. We 
with the addition to Chris Hero into this match, this World Heavyweight Championship match is now a triple threat elimination match. And what a spanner in the works by the by the people in charge to include Chris Hero in this World Heavyweight Championship match. And Chris Hero immediately with a cravat suplex. Gregory Snape getting distracted by the crowd and Chris Hero with a neck breaker. He's on fire. My God. John Bryant just watching as Chris Hero stretches out Gregory Snape, the reigning defending VPW World Heavyweight Champion. Came into this match preparing to wrestle just Jordan Bryant. And much like Jordan Bryant, who was just preparing to face Gregory Snape. Gregory Snape is a machine on his own. And now this wrench in the works. Chris Hero making his VPW debut. Chris Hero is just on fire. Watch out, takes him down. He wasn't paying attention there. Neckbreaker from the cravat. The king of the cravat is Chris Hero. Now this is elimination rules. So once a pinfall or submission is gained, the person who tapped out or was pinned has to go back to the locker room. And the match continues as a regular 1v1 match. Got to admit, Chris Hero might be the favorite here, single like Boston Crab. Chris Hero under no real obligation to break that up. John Bryant picks him up, Brain Buster. Quick drop off there. Arm drag. Taking down the bigger man. No, Gregory Snape is back in control. Neck breaker right on the Pain for Glory logo. Let's not forget why we're here. After this match, we'll be crowning the first ever VPW North American Champion. And Chris Hero, I'm not sure what he was going for there. Spine buster in the center of the ring by the reigning defending champion. You have to have eyes in the back of your head here. So anybody can attack you from any which way. Seems like Chris Hero doesn't want to get involved. But he has to keep those eyes in the back of his head open. And Gregory Snape goes to the outside. And a reverse DDT flat as a pancake. John Bryan kicked to the back. This year, Jordan Bryant has neglected to put on kick pads, so that's going to be a lot more impact from his vicious kicks. And a second rope flying forearm. Went for Gregory Snape. Big mistake. Snape back in control. Takes down the challenger he was expecting. This hero front face lock. To pick him up, Gut Suplex. It's not easy to lift up a six foot seven. Wait a minute. Chris Hero with a shout out to his former tag team partner, Claudio Castagnoli, with that version of the Ricola bomb. Chris Hero crouching in the corner. He's going to follow that up. Spin, Cyclone Kill. Takes down the champion. But the other challenger went for the neckbreaker, pushed out of it. And the neckbreaker of his own. That probably saved the champion, Gregory Snape, from losing his championship there. And there's a cutter. Don't know why he's using the cutter, but he is. And a Liger bomb. Cover. No. This hero with a slingshot sent on. Nicely executed. 
Hero in complete control here. He's definitely impressing in his VPW debut. And he's going to whip him into the corner. Gregory Snape in the way. No, no. John Bryant fighting back. Super kick. He just got starstruck. One, two, kick out by Chris Hero. It could have been all over right there. What's Jordan even thinking? Her Karana taking the big man down. Jordan, the smallest competitor in this match. Willing to show his impressive streak here. But he's stalling. He's stalling for some reason. And the champion regains his bearings, but not enough to, to, to distract himself from that. Not even the right words. Chris Hero back in on drag takeover. Follows it up. No. Chris Hero fights back. Cravat suplex. And a spine buster. He just turns right around into that move. Slams his knee into the mat. No, dodges the kick to the back there. And this is going to be a slugfest. Gregory Snape a little bit too slow on that one attack there. Allowed Cass uh, Chris Hero, formerly known as Cassius Ono. Sneak right in there, and there's the single leg Boston Crab too close to the ropes. So he let go. And he picks him up. Running power slam. Can the champion, and he's signaling for the end, can the champion retain his championship he hasn't been defeated thus far in VPW this is his first defense two count kick out by Jordan Bryant got distracted by the challenger and run into the corner dodges it another spine buster arm drag by Jordan Bryant taking advantage of a distraction. Hurricane Rana. The champion taking a little bit of a breather here. And a neck breaker version of the Sin Cycle. And has gotten Jordan Bryant so many victories. Cover. One. Two. No, kick out at two. Didn't get all that he wanted there. Bryant waiting. Oh my god, he just hit him with his own rolling elbow. What disrespect by this cocky young upstart. Two and three. Chris Hero has been eliminated. What a showing in his debut match here. But he just took his own elbow, the rolling elbow, and has been eliminated. And that falling powerbomb didn't quite finish off Jordan Bryant. And spinning power slam. That could be it. Wait a minute. Gregory Snape not finished with him. Arms crossed. Headshot. One hit, one kill. One, two, no! I think that's the first time anybody has kicked out of the headshot. High stakes here, Jordan Bryant knows it. We could be seeing a new champion here. Definitely not gonna be Chris Hero. He's already eliminated. Wade slips out the back of that body slam. Wait a minute. Second time. Headshot. And he's not even finished with this guy yet. 
They work him into the corner, John Bryant's bleeding. Busted open. And there it is, the sin cycle. Out of nowhere, one, two, we got a new champion. And his name is Jordan Bryant. Just came out of nowhere there. The starstruck. It looked like Gregory might have had things well in hand there, but as soon as Jordan Bryant kicked out of the headshot, that was it, that was it. He got hit with a second one, but still had the wherewithal to strike out and hit him with the sin cycle. The second city sinner, victorious, here at Pain for Glory. It is your new VPW Heavyweight Champion of the World. My God, and there's the power bomb. Thought that could be it. Two, and got the shoulder up. Congratulations to the, that impressive young man. Knocked out Ka uh, Chris Hero with his own elbow and then hit Gregory Snape with the Sin Cycle and is your new champion. My God. Thought nobody could stop Gregory Snape, but tonight he was stopped by Jordan Bryant. This is it, tournament finals. We've already seen the heavyweight championship of the world change hands, new champion, Jordan Bryant. And the surprise appearance of Chris Hero here in VPW. But now this match, tournament finals, to crown the first ever VPW North American champion. Here comes AK-47. His road to the finals has seen him demolish James Phelps in an incredibly one-sided match. And he also put away Lucian L. Jones to make his way here to the tournament finals. He looks ready to go. Absolute incredible showing here by the Australian acrobat. His opponent, also from Australia, has had a tougher road than him. I mean, John went through an ass kicking by Caleb Hart. He went through an ass kicking from Azrael and still has managed to find his way to the tournament finals. He beat Caleb Hart by count out. He beat Azrael by pinfall. And most people would have counted John out. No, no pun intended, obviously. Can he make it to the championship? There we go, there's what they're fighting for. The VPW North American Championship as displayed by the referee. Told you at the beginning of the show, a long night for that referee. 
championship on the line and the ref says let's go John Robertson starting off with a back suplex AK-47 with an arm drag He's trying to capitalize takes him over the top rope and they both have the count of 10 to get back into the ring and this has been an incredible pain for glory championship tournament here and a Salida del Sol on the outside can't get a victory on the outside that's worth a damn anyway but it was worth a lot to John when he beat Caleb Hart the referee up to the count of seven already John does not want to win this by count out if he can help it picks up AK-47 he's gonna drag him to the ropes and no he was gonna mimic what AK-47 did to him a few seconds ago you know, where's John taking him AK-47 having none of it Referee up to a count of three. Don't know what he was going to go for there, but John Robinson stopped it. Count of five. Judges moving out the way. AK-47 getting back into the ring. And a neck breaker by John Robinson. Off the ropes. Sent on splash. Drop kick to the back. John knows exactly what he has to do here to win. He's going to set him up. Power bomb. And an alley oop into the corner. Tried to follow it up. Missed. And a shotgun drop kick. Sling blade could be it right here one two no AK-47 kicks out of the count of two John saying that this is the end show you can to the balls that's gotta be it here one Two, no, AK-47 kicks out again at two. And John cannot believe it. I'm sure he, he wants that championship. Both men do. Elbow drop from the top. But after the road that John's been down just here tonight, the championship would be just glorious to have in a Hurricanrana by AK-47. Whichever way this goes, the championship's coming back to Australia. And there's the axe kick. AK-47 signaling for that tiger bomb. Picks him up, drives him into the canvas. One, two, no! Oh, two count and a kick out. AK-47 trying to rile himself up here. Close lines. Duck. And a drop kick. John Robertson's in trouble here. And what is he gonna go for here? Shining wizard to the back of the head. But John Robertson still has the resiliency in play. Let's go try and finish him off. And another Shoryuken to the balls. It's got to be it. Dragging him away from the ropes. One, two, and John Robertson has won the VPW North American Championship. Somehow pulling out all the stops. 
to become champion. Oh my god. And everybody <clears throat> is on their feet for our new North American champion. And there's the Shoryuken to the Bulls. The fireball off the cut, if you will. I think this might have been the first one where AK-47 kicked out. Yes, it is. There's the Tiger Bomb. Looked like AK-47 might have had it here. Given everything that John and AK-47 have been through, this has been an amazing tournament. My hat's off to both men here. And the referee... About to present him with his hard earned prize. John Robertson, BPW North American Champion. That about does it here for Pain for Glory. Two new champions. Congratulations to both men. Good night.